I love flowers, farming and decorating in my cosy games, so when I first saw the trailer for A Garden Life, A Cosy Simulator, I knew I needed to play this. But is this game as good as it looks? Over the past few days I have sunk a whole bunch of hours into this game and I wanted to share with you my first thoughts and impressions about the game so you know whether it's worth your time and money. For full transparency I was given a copy of this game but all of the opinions are my own and I have not been guided on what to say. I have played the PC version and I've also tried it on the Steam Deck. The game is now available to purchase on PC and some consoles, however the Switch release is scheduled for the 14th of March so you may just have to wait a little bit longer for that one. Before we get into this deep dive, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to see more games like this. So before we get into my opinions and thoughts on the game, I just wanted to give you a little bit of an overview as to what to expect if you're on the fence about buying it. Firstly, there are two game modes available, there is story mode and creative mode. I spent most of my time in story mode but I have also played a little bit of creative and I'll reveal my feelings on that later. The game starts off like most simulation games, you arrive fresh off the bus and learn that you have been volun forced <laughs> to take over the community garden which needs a new patreon following the passing of the previous gardener. As you expect, the garden is pretty run down and in definite need of some TLC. After clearing out the weeds, you will reveal the garden shed. Inside the garden shed, you will find three different storage containers, a crafting bench, a plant encyclopedia which also acts as a way to revisit the tutorial and it has some hints and tips inside, and most importantly, a pet cat, who doesn't actually do a lot apart from sleep, but you can pet it so it's cute. You may also notice that there is a broken bridge and some ruins which behind that is a greenhouse. This will formulate part of the story and in the shed on a note there is some goals of the story mode for you to keep track of. The game revolves around two key areas, your garden and the village square. The village square is where you will find the shop ran by Leslie and in the shop you can buy new tools, seeds and some furniture. Some of the items you'll find here, they are seasonal and you can tell this by the different coloured backgrounds they have if they are or not. The centre of the village also opens up further as you progress in the story and you'll be able to sell items here at your very own stall and you'll also be able to open up the pavilion where you can help Jasmine with some sculptures for rewards. The pavilion definitely felt like a bit of a stretch goal and added some longevity to the game which is good. So that is your surroundings, what is the actual gameplay composed of? Well this is pretty much a farming sim that has been given a florist makeover so do expect to do some grinding. In the beginning you are given some tools and starter seeds to get you going and the planting, watering, pruning cycle is pretty straightforward. Just like in real life, pests can spawn on your flowers and you need to keep on top of them to prevent them from dying. Over time your flowers will also produce seeds and there is a chance for a new variety of plant or flower to become unlocked. In your plant encyclopedia you will be able to keep track of which plants you have managed to identify. The encyclopedia will also help you keep track of some of the growing conditions for the plants as for example some will require a trellis to grow. To help you in your garden you are also able to purchase more tools from the store and it is definitely worthwhile looking at these because they may make your gardening experience a lot easier. For example, there is a hose which I highly recommend purchasing ASAP and as you earn more money you can even upgrade to sprinklers. When the flowers bloom it is also time to get your pruning shears out because these cuttings are where the money is. You can take the cuttings you've collected and turn them into bouquets to sell at your garden stall in the village square. You can also sell seeds but I would definitely recommend keeping hold of some of them. You will also need these cuttings to complete side quests, main quests and help out the pavilion with the flower statues. Do not worry, the flowers most definitely grow back. In order to progress through the story you will need some decent cash for customization and opening up new areas which will be purchasable at the notice board. The gameplay loop overall is very relaxing and it is quite addictive. The speed of the days are quite good and I didn't think that they felt too long or too short and you can always use fertilizer to speed up the process of flowers growing and if you want things to happen a bit quicker, 
Fertilizer is readily available and as you collect things, you will notice that you collect lots of piles of leaves, which can easily be turned to help grow things quicker. To keep the gameplay interesting in story mode, there are plenty of quests and stretch goals to keep you hooked. The main quest line does seem to largely revolve around the note within your garden shed, but you must unlock some events to allow for progression within this list. The side quests can be found in your mailbox, and the majority of these require cuttings or bouquets that you can craft, and in return you'll earn money and sometimes special items. I will say that for some of these, it did take me a very long time to unlock some of the flowers that were required for the quest, which was a little bit frustrating, but it did keep me trying to breed new colours, and overall the quests are definitely a good addition to the game, because it keeps you kind of thinking about what you need to do next, as opposed to just more of a sandbox style. The decorating in this game definitely did provide a nice break from the gameplay loop, and you can do this in both story mode and also creative mode. In story mode, you are required to buy your decorations or craft them in the workbench, whereas in creative mode, you do not need money. However, you are still required to take the trip to the village square to obtain the items. One of the added bonuses is that you can bulk buy and you can also change the seasons easily in your garden shed so that you can get your hands on all of the different seasonal offerings, which definitely helps you speed up the process. You also have access to all of the seeds within your seed storage so you don't have to worry about grinding out the hybrids and the plot is fully unlocked so you can just go straight to decorating the greenhouse if you wanted to. I would have just loved an endless inventory of things to make this feel like a true creative mode but this is definitely easier and it definitely makes decorating speed up a lot more. The decorations in this game are very cute and there is a good variety of different items, different styles and colours and they are all obviously very fitting to the garden style. In particular, some of my favourites were the really adorable cottage core items such as mushrooms and fairy doors. There is just a really cute array. Some of the plant pots are really nice as well and you can really go to town. There's ponds, gazebos, tables and chairs if you wanted to add them as well. There is good fencing options for trellises there is just so much there is even like a fairy like garland which is chef's kiss so adorable there are cute little ducks and frogs honestly there is just so much there is also the ability to customize these items and there is a purchasable deco brush which means you can literally change the style at the click of a button which is super easy and i really liked it the actual decorating mechanic is also super easy. There is no grid, which means you can freely place items wherever you like. And this definitely means that you can get very creative with your placement. Some items are even stackable, so you can layer things. I am a clutter queen, so I do love that. Just be careful, don't get yourself stuck in an area because that can cause a whole bunch of problems. I really loved mixing up the different plants with the actual decor items and you can play on different colours and themes depending on what kind of idea you have for your garden. I cannot wait to see what amazing builds people come up with in this game because I think that they are going to be beautiful. When it came to decorating and just the game in general, the controls were quite straightforward. I did play using PC and mouse on the computer for the majority of my time, and they were very easy to get to grips with. The only downside that I did find was that instead of having one action button, sometimes there were two. So for example, when you picked up a plant, you do it with one button, and then to place it again, you need to do it with another button, which didn't feel very smooth, and sometimes I did forget what I was doing, just because I think you get a little bit of muscle memory Memory. One thing I also wanted to say is that pruning did take a lot of clicking and at some points I did worry that I was going to get a repetitive strain injury. I don't know if there is a tool that I'm missing which would make this easier but I really wish that there was so that you could just kind of do a whole fail swoop of pruning instead of individually clicking would be so much easier. I did also play on the Steam Deck and generally the game ran well. It did freeze once for me, I'm not sure why it did this. The game obviously isn't verified for the Steam Deck, but as for the controls, even as a new player, it was quite good to just pick up handheld and I didn't have many issues moving around the world and collecting things. It wasn't as quick as I would have done it on PC and mouse, but it did still play quite well. 
As you can see, this game is also first player view and this may be a turn off for some people, but I will say that if you are wanting to play it and you might suffer from motion sickness, I will say that controlling this on PC was a lot easier than it was on the Steam Deck. I did notice that some settings may help alleviate motion sickness if you do struggle with first player view, but I didn't test these out so I can't give you a full review on them. But overall, it was really easy to get to grips with. I do also think that a controller would be great. I didn't check if there is controller support, but I'm assuming that there will be. Another thing that the game has done well is the music and the sound effects. The music is very fitting with the overall chill vibes of the game. It is actually quite serene, which is so nice. The sound effects were also quite well done. I do think that the rain sounds could have been a little bit more relaxing though. There were also some random background sounds, which I couldn't pinpoint what they were. Perhaps they were garden bugs. Either way, I did find myself listening out for them and they were very, very strange noises. I'm not gonna try and recreate them, but if you play, you'll no. There was also some voice acting which did have some British accents which was nice to see in a video game. At points I couldn't figure out if the majority of this was done by one actor or one actress but either way it was quite nice to have some voices in the game and it did break up from just the chill sounds and you knew when a new kind of event was happening which was good. Now onto the graphics, this is obviously quite subjective and I'm no expert on game graphics but I did like the game graphics but were they my favourite? Probably not. There was just something about them that I couldn't put my finger on. I do, however, think that they definitely meet the whimsical feel of this game. And the details in the town were really nice. I liked all of the different buildings. The signs were cute. Overall, the game felt kind of vibrant, but not in your face. I think maybe the colour of the flowers and all of the decor surrounding it was nice. I do love it. I'm more on the love side of the graphics than the hate side of the graphics, which is good. The character pictures were also nice and the postcards for the quest had some nice details as well. At times there were things like dandelions floating around my garden which I thought was cute. I wasn't so much a fan of the rain especially when it happens a few days in a row but generally I'm not a fan of the rain in any game. I just found it quite distracting and it did make it a little bit harder to see like when bugs were on your plants. Either way I get the need for it just maybe toned it down a little bit. So I've kind of given you some feelings so far, some initial feelings. I'm gonna get straight to it and let's get to my key pros and my key cons about this game. So listen up if you're on the fence about it. So let's start off with the pros. Firstly, this may not be a pro for everyone, but in the majority of the games I've been enjoying lately, there has been a lot of walking to different points of the map, traipsing around like these huge maps just to get to talk to someone. So I actually enjoyed the fact that this game revolves around two different areas only, the garden and the village square. It means it's combined. There's no endless traipsing from one side of the map to the other. You're not wasting time in your day. It's really easy to kind of move between the different areas which is a bonus for me. I also quite like that this game was not stressful, it was very serene, nothing felt rushed, there weren't any time limits about getting things done, so you can just really really sit back and do everything at your own pace, which is a huge huge plus point for me. I'm wanting to turn in a game and just chill for the evening and this is definitely one of those games that would fit that. I know I briefly touched on this, but the decorating is also a standout feature for me. I think there is going to be so many possibilities for this, and because you can have multiple saves in the game, it means you can explore lots of different attributes, lots of different furniture, try out different colour themes, and because of that, there is definite replayability here as well. If you are an avid decorator, you are going to love this. I also really liked the variety of the plants. There were so many different ones and they're all based off of real life plants. As a bit of a flower lover, this was really nice. And seeing all of the different colors and not knowing what would unlock next was also fun. I also had a good time decorating and arranging all of my plants together. So you could see all of the different colors side by side, which is maybe a weird thing, but it was really, really satisfying just to look at them and go, oh look, there's all my daffodils. There's all my tulips. Is that odd? I don't know, but I did enjoy it. 
Another unexpected thing for me was the pavilion where you can contribute cuttings for the garden statues. I didn't make much progress with this because a lot of it did require like hybrid flowers that I hadn't unlocked yet, but I think this is a great addition to the game and a nice touch for those of you who really like to complete everything. Like it's a good thing to aspire to complete and just have done. And then I think it will be beautiful when it is complete because some of the shapes and stuff in there are really nice. So those are my main pros about this game. What things did I have an issue with? Now some of these will seem very nitpicky and probably very easily fixed so maybe we will see a quality of life update in the future. Firstly I wish there was a way to see what a plant was when you've placed it down. There are so many different varieties which is great but keeping track of what you have and you haven't planted at sometimes is hard and until you really get to grips with what's going on in the game some of them might be kind of obscure to you you might not have heard of a particular plant so it does take some time to learn what is what so having a label or something would just be nice just to see that everything's okay because it does tell you that the plant is healthy but it doesn't tell you what the plant is so I would love that little detail to be added the storage could also be organized a bit better and the UI could be a bit bigger just to make it a bit more accessible. There is a lot of dead space surrounding it so that could definitely be utilized a bit better. Initially I thought there was great having loads of different pages and the storage does seem endless but as you do progress, word of warning, it does become a bit problematic. When you collect things, it will automatically go to your storage, which is great. I love that. But this can be problematic if you're collecting piles of leaves and then they just fill up your storage and then it takes forever to find stuff. I would like it if there was a way to organize different tabs between seeds, flowers and weeds. It would just make it easier to organize and it would be nice if there was a way to see if a particular seed was planted or when a new seed unlocks in the storage there is like a star or something as I did find myself endlessly scrolling through when I was trying to find something. So it did, it, I would just like it to jump out at me a bit more. Just some organization, some tabs would be great. When completing quests, sometimes a new chat starts when you're in different windows, which is a little bit annoying because not always clear when you have triggered a new kind of quest line or a new story or cutscene. So if the chat starts going while you're in a window and you're trying to do something, it is a little bit frustrating, but it does kind of mean that you know you have to come out quickly so you can start seeing what's going on. I don't think the actual chat box disappears, but you can hear the noise, the voice chat going on so you know. But either way, I just feel like it would be nice if there was a way for it to pause just a minute until you come out of the screen that you're in. The tutorial itself isn't so much a negative, it was okay. And once the tutorial was over, you did have the book to refer to, but it didn't always have the answers I was looking for. At points, a plant randomly stopped growing or didn't grow at all. And even referring to the book, I didn't really understand the real reason why. This happened particularly with the jasmine and it took me a long time to get it placed right on the trellis for it to start growing. And even then, I planted one next to a trellis and then the one next to it did didn't grow I was so confused and just a bit more explanation at points would be good just to help you understand and get to grips with all of the growing kind of differences it would be nice Although there are seasons in the game, it doesn't feel like there is much emphasis on this beyond the general aesthetics and different things you can buy like you don't so much have seasonal crops it just seems that they kind of grow all year round, which is a bit odd to me, but it was nice because you meant that you could just have the crops all year round and they were there ready to kind of cut and grow as you need them. And finally, if you're looking for a storage rich game, I don't think this is it. Yes, there are characters and yes, we do learn about the history of the garden and so much about the different characters, but it didn't feel as deep or as lore heavy as I was expecting. Don't get me wrong, I am fine with this. I play simulation games for the gameplay mainly and just to chill. But if you're wanting a story, I wouldn't expect too much. Unless something wild happens after the 12 hours that I've played, I can't see it happening. But unless it does and you learn something very, very deep soon, I just don't think that there's as deep a story as I thought that there would be. So we're getting near the end now and I've not spoken about pricing yet. Before I reveal the price, let me know in the comments what you would expect to pay for a game like this. 
Now this is where I'm a bit confused because the Steam versus the Switch price doesn't really add up for me. I know that there is obviously cost involved for porting a game, but it does seem steep. The base game on Steam is £20.99 and the supporters edition is £24.99, which I think is a pretty fair price for the amount of gameplay that is going to be in this. And had I not been gifted a copy, I would definitely be happy purchasing it at that price. There are definitely hours of gameplay, there's creative mode, which is a huge selling point for replayability. However, when we turn to the Switch price, which is coming out in March, it is advertised on the eShop at £35.99. British pounds and I've also seen physical copies of the game for as high as 45 pounds which is at least 15 pounds more expensive than the base game on PC. I don't know the clear reason for this I'm not in the game industry I'm just saying this as a player but whether you get something extra there wasn't anything obvious like that on the Nintendo page so basically you're probably paying for the privilege of let's face it for it not to run as well because I'm not saying that for the game itself, but I'm just saying that because of the general Switch capabilities. We all know it's not as good now. We are years down the line since the release of this console and we are all desperate for a new one. So although I will be very interested to see how the game runs in the future on the Switch, I just really, if you have the ability, if you're able to, I would definitely think about purchasing it on Steam, not just for your wallet, but also for the, the general play and how much better it will perform. Hopefully though, if you do want it on the Switch, hopefully there'll be like a release sale or something in the shop just so that you can get a little bit of a discount. Okay, just before we get to the end of the video, I just want to quickly look into whether this game is right for you and give you a little bit of an insight into who I think would enjoy this game. Firstly, and most obviously, if you enjoy decorating, then you will love this game. Particularly if you are looking for an outdoor focus on cottagecore aesthetics then this will be perfect for you. Secondly if you are a completionist then I think this would also be good for you. Getting all of the different variations of flowers and completing the quest and the pavilion is definitely a stretch goal and frankly I'm here for that. Also if you enjoy farming simulators but you are tired of everything looking the same, you still enjoy the farming mechanics of watering, harvesting etc but you want something a different take on it basically and a beautiful one at that then this one will be good for you. I would maybe also say hold off on buying this game for now if you're tired of grinding and you need a break from it. I did play the majority of this game in a short period of time which may be why it felt like there was quite a lot of repetitive gameplay and collecting things which may be a turn off for some of you especially if you're in the midst of another big farming sim. Maybe give it a break and then come back to this one a little bit later. I will say though there was something still fun about it and it did feel different so maybe it will be different for you when you come to playing the game. So there we have it, let me know if you're going to play and if you have any questions about the game please feel free to leave a comment and I will try and help. Have a great rest of your day and I shall see you again soon. Bye bye!